Today I, I have a, a simple message of faith. I want you before you that long, probably a couple of hours. And if I have to put a title on today's message, I simply say, meekness goes as weakness. Because if you want to be strong, you got to have a spirit of a meekness. Because that's what we've got to do when it comes to uh, serving God. Yes. You've got to listen to what he's saying and just have a spirit of meekness. Yes. Just do whatever God says, that's what I'm going to do. So we look at uh, the word meekness and I sort of look it up and find out what meekness really is all about. And meekness means simply being patient. You know? Being steadfast. Steadfast in what? On the word of Almighty God. The word is in three parts. The written word, the spoken word, and the living word. The written word is the Bible. And why we have the Bible is that we want to study to show ourselves the proof. Yes. The spoken word is given for a purpose. And Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand. He's the living word. And when we go to the Lord in the name of Jesus, He's making intercessions for you and I. So we've got to be steadfast. And another aspect of meekness is not harboring any resentment. Right. We as God's people ought to be able to come together in love, in peace, in unity, in just agreement in what the word of the Lord is saying. You know, you may love our Diet Coke, I'm like Diet Pepsi, but we have no right getting bent out of shape for it. Psalms 37 says, fret not thyself. Don't get bent out of shape That's with right. these type of things. That's right. Just stand firm on what the word of the Lord is saying. Now when it comes to, to weakness, I didn't have to look it up. All I had to do was to examine myself. Right. And I see where I came from. I know that Deacon Lester said it, and what he said was that I may not be where I am supposed to be, but he said, I thank God that I'm not where I used to be. Right. 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 So when we look at weakness, it's a state of being feeble. Another uh, word that comes into play is diluted. Some of us have seen Western movies and the, the cowboy will go into the saloon and he will order whiskey. And then he will get a strong dose and after that, he's going to get it weaker and weaker. But the saloon owner used to dilute it and water. So as he adds the water into this thing, it becomes weak. That's weak. It's diluted. And my words to being weak is nothing more than a spineless cockroach. Yeah. 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 In the book of Genesis, God said to his son, to his spirit, to the angels, the seraphim, the cherubim. Yes. He said, let us make man yes. in our own image. Our own image. God is an all-powerful God. Yes. 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 I have it all the time. But God ain't powerful. You so are your servant. My servant because he's all. all, all, all power. Power. He's not a mighty God. Although we sing the song, God is a mighty oh, God. But why do I serve God? Because I thank him that he's not mighty, but he is the almighty. And there's such a thing as just humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. So today we're going to take a look at some scripture as we deal with meekness as it refers to versus weakness. You can't get anywhere being weak. They are feeble, diluted, spineless. When God made man, God gave man to a something that he never gave to a woman. And we as men ought to be able to use it, to stand up, but we say, have the God, if you would, wish to stand and to yes. serve the Lord. Yes. Not to back up for no devil. The All time right. has come for us to move in his face. Thank and you to tell him his faith. And I am coming in the name of my Lord Amen. and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. The little shepherd boy David, he done that to a big old giant. Mm. He said to the giant, you come to me with a sword. Yes. In David's time, that sword was considered high tech. David is saying, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. Lord. We have been backing up, taking back seat for far too long against the forces of hell. The evil one, his demon, is in. And it's about time that we just stand still and see the glory of the Lord. If you're not going to move forward, stand still. Don't give up any ground. Why? Because God is in control. God has given us the strength. And God is saying, I made man and not a wimp. We're not talking about simply the man and the male of the species, but man as in mankind. Yeah. There's so many powerful women of God. Yes, there. Today in the Sunday school we were dealing with uh, women of God and how God used women. 
Yeah. At first, someone to be preaching the, for the new church after Christ had fulfilled the law. Yes. First woman. Woman said, He's not dead, He's risen. Yes. And they are preaching the resurrection message. Thank you, Lord. And as it was pointing out, the men were in a room locked up someplace, hiding and scared. But the woman went to the grave. And what did the angel say? Seeking Jesus. Yes. He said, but well, why seek he the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. He's risen. Yes. That's the message that the woman uh, delivering to God's people. Some people say, well, I can't have a woman as my pastor. I can't have a woman. We get into the book of Galatians, and the book of Galatians tells us that there's neither male, there's neither female, ever born, nor free, Greek, or Jew, West Indian, South Carolina, Bostonian, <laughs> <laughs> right. no different, no different, because we are all one in Christ. And what Christ has for me, he has for you. Yes. You see, we want to paint some, some mental pictures of this thing called meekness, and about some of the things that we're doing that's not in line with meekness. Try and paint this picture. That is Resurrection Day. Yes. And we are standing before God. Yes. And God is yes. seated upon his throne and Jesus is at his side. And the Holy Spirit is getting ready to present the church to Jesus Christ so that Jesus could take it to his Father. And then God asks us, he says, what have you done in the name of my son? With the sacrifice on Calvary Cross. And then we are going to say to him, well, I bind the Canadian because he seems to be at times a loose scanner. I just bind him. Oh, I bind sister so and so because she's not living right, doing things that she has no right doing, and I bind her. And then Jesus is going to stand up. And you're going to see the expression on his face. An expression that took place when he ran the money changers out of the temple. He said, This is my father's house. It shall be called a house of prayer. He yes. said, But you have made it into a den of thieves. Yes. And leave these people out. And Jesus is going to ask us, He says, You're going to say to me, to my face, that you bind that deacon, you bind that brother, you bind that sister. I told that sister, I told that brother to stand in the liberty where would I have set yes. you free. Who do you think you are to come and bind who I set free? Yes. Jesus is just one is going to say, you see that sign that points to the left? It's on the way to hell. And you're on the way to bust hell wide open. Why? Because we want to bind each other. Right. We've got to come together in peace, in peace unity, in love, yes. in love yes. forgiving one another, yes. and sharing with one another. Amen. Why is it that we've got to be within the realm of the church and fuming and we fussing and we cussing and you on this side and I on that side and we can't say hi and we can't say praise the Lord. Come on. Yeah. Right. So we're not being operating in that spirit of meekness. God wants us to be together. You and I, community revival outreach ministry, we're not going any place anytime soon. Well, God is preparing his people here. He's bringing minister to the forefront. Yes, he's evangelist to the forefront. Yes, he has a man that he has already called years ago. Thank you. Yes. He's leading us. But right. God is waiting for us to come together into the unity of the spirit. So that when this happens and then we have peace, joy, love, yes. and fellowship one with the other, yes. then we're going to bust loose and this place is going to be big enough. And God will provide for us a place in which we could serve us, the community. Thank you, Lord. Because it's a loss, it's a dying world out there. It's yes. like a spirit of meekness. And my late mother had a prayer that she taught us kids. And the prayer went something like this. Gentle Jesus, meek and mind, look upon a little child. We look at Jesus as being gentle, looking at him as being meek, looking at him as being mind. And yet still we say that we want to be Christ-like, Christian, and be anything but meek and mind. Some of us are just playing hostile one oh, towards the other. In the realm of God, it doesn't work that way. You may not like what you better learn to love me if you have any intention of making it into heaven. All right. Because if you went to the congregation and you turn in some corner and you come across in the streets of gold, you're just going to run into me and no time to say, what is he doing here? You better get it right. God is not going to have any mess up in heaven. God's God for sure with the angel. And what does God say to the angel? Second is joke over here. He said he doesn't want to rise up and he wants to rebel against God. God is so powerful that when God appoints us to do something, it will be accomplished. Yeah. And he wanted the devil out of heaven and his angels come there. God didn't have to do it. 
And so the same way that God could give these instructions to angel, He's given you and I today instructions. And one of the instructions is we've got to have a spiritual meekness. That's what it's all about. There's a phrase that I'm going to use, and I'm 99.999%. That each and every one of us in here today either use that phrase, heard the phrase, or heard somebody using it to watch somebody. Well, and that phrase is simply, get a life. <laughs> we hear this, and people are saying it to each other. Oh, get a life. Church of the children of the living God saying to each other, get a life. That's not what my Bible says. All right. My Bible says that we ought to lose our life. Amen. We lose it for what? For Jesus' sake. For yes. the sake of the yes. gospel. Yes. 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 So then when we lose it, we're going yes. to have it. Yes. You know, we may ask, well, what if I give my life to the Lord? I'll lose my life. And what is the profit? God has said to us, he says that there's no man who has lived, given up husband, wife, children, life. Amen. So Amen. the gospel say, he said, who won't receive manifold more in this present time? He says, and in the world to come, it's one of life. Yes. So we have nothing yes. in which to fear, nothing in which to be ashamed of. Yes. We ought to be able to stand before God. We already stood before Him, on pain as we sang in the song. Yes. I'm looking at my Savior's love. See, I can't take what God done for you and put it on my account. I ought to get my account in order. My account has got to be made straight. You see, I can pay my gas bill and you can pay your gas company won't come after me, they come after you. You pay your light bill and I don't pay mine, they're not coming after you, they're coming after me. And it's the same thing we get into the spiritual realm, the you know, spirit of meekness. But I've got to be able to go to God. And I've got to search myself daily. I say, oh Lord, I know this day I've gone angry, I lost my, my temper, I blew up, I done some things, I said some things. But Lord, I'm sorry. And in 1 John 1 9, he says that if we confess, he says, I'm faithful and just. Yes. Forgive you for all your sins. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes. My Bible tells me that there's one sin and one sin only that is known as the unpardonable sin. Yes. And that's yes. the last spirit of God's Holy Spirit. And all of the Bible talks about one sin. I'm here today to tell you there are two sins that will not be forgiven. Is the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit, and the other sin is the unconfessed sin. Yes. For us to make it right, we've got to confess. Wait, wait, to us in one John one nine. He said, "Just come to me with a spirit of meekness, a pure heart, a contrite heart, and let us spit it out and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The Lord is willing. He's waiting to have the blood applied, so that in time will come, what will do with us? He will lift us up. Because when God lifts up, ain't nobody can pull down." Who God is keeping down, nobody can come down. And they try to do these things. There's a man in, in New Hampshire calling himself a, a bishop, homosexual bishop. Yes. Yes. We ought to follow his lead. We ought to have a church whereby we can say this is the church of murderers. Right. All the murdering is wrong, but since we're in the church, we could have a, a murderer bishop. Right. One who has to give up murdering. You could have the pocketbook snatcher. Oh, yeah. You could have the liars church. Yes. That's not the way God organized and set forth his standard. We all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Always. Oh, what your sin oh, oh, And all my oh, God, oh. I was shaping in iniquity, born in sin. Born in sin. And done some wrong things that I had no right doing. Saying some things that I had no right saying. But yes. trying God for his mercy, for his grace, for his yes. long suffering. Yes. Yes. It doesn't mean that God is suffering for me. All it means is that God has put up with me for a long time. Oh, God. Yes. But he says, you know what? One day I see down the line that he's going to come and he's going to accept my son's sacrifice on Calvary cross. Yes. So that while I was yet a sinner, filthy, dirty, he sent to his son, go to the cross. He couldn't escape. Why? The wages of sin is death. Yes. Yes. And if you don't know Jesus yes. Christ in the unity yes. of life, then heaven yes. help us. I know that some of us have been able to travel, go out to the country, coming back in. Uh, when I'm coming back, I've got to have my passport, I've got to have my visa. American citizens have a passport and they want to see who you are. They want to stand that and allow you to come into the country. But when it comes to the Church of Jesus Christ, any and everybody can walk in. It doesn't mean that they are citizens of heaven. They just come in thank God that they did come in. And when they come in, they can hear the word of God. And if they're not living right, the opportunity will be open. 
that you'll be able to say today, Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, take command, take authority. Yes. And Lord, you can do this through a spirit of meekness. Yes. Today we want to look at some scripture in the New Testament book of Peter. First Peter. First Peter chapter 3. And we're going to look at some scriptures and we're going to examine it as the Bible gives it. And we're going to examine it on the flip side. Yes. First Peter chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 12 and we're going to read through to verse 15. that we look at that scripture over, all we could read it is something like this. The eyes of the Lord are not over the evil and the sinner. All right. He says, in, and the scripture says, and his ears are open unto oh. their prayers. Yes. Now, if you're not living right, you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's a waste of time praying. Because God's ear will not be open unto the prayers of sinner. You see now, when he clears it up in the latter part of this verse, it says the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So you and I have got to be careful as we deal with each other. Yes. That we don't do evil. We don't hurt somebody's feeling and walk away feeling good. Yeah. And being me, all it tells me that what I've got to do is, is no matter how high in life, God will lift me up. And I want to see Jesus. I gotta look up. Right. Because he's that much high. Yeah. The son of the living God. He's the bright and morning star. He came into the world at one time, and we read it in Matthew, Matthew, Luke, and John, and we see about at this time of the year, where he was in the manger. And, um, today the world is still having Jesus in the manger. Wrapped him up. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Yeah, got him all dressed up. People were coming and singing songs at this time of the year, but Rudolph the Red Nose Ring. Watch out there, watch out. And no rain that can take us into heaven. Oh, man. I saw mommy kissing Santa. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Big old fat dude in a red suit. Watch out! He's gonna be coming to us. Not gonna help us. Oh. Chapter three. 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 Chapter Billion dollars mm. in sale mm. in one day, one day. One day. And yet, still, at this time, they're concerned what sort of season it will bring. Right. Last week, they were concerned and they were worried. Too much snow, people can't go out to shop. Mm. And all they're concerned about is the green, the money. That's right. You don't hear anyone in the stores telling us, well, this is something that brings to remembrance the birth of Jesus Christ. Mm. It's always some gimmick. And all the advertising that they have on the paper, on television, on radio, is designed to do one thing and one thing only. To separate us from all right. All right. They will take it. There's nothing wrong in buying a gift and giving it to someone. But when we come to this time of the year, the first gift that they have yeah. done yeah. is that Jesus Christ was born. Yeah. Some people say that he wasn't born on Christmas Day. I don't care when he was born. Christmas Day is a good day for me to celebrate his birth. Yeah. And recognizing that he was born. Yeah. <coughs> Today is our Sunday school lesson. Uh, it started off in the introduction. And on the 5th of March, 1994. It says that this man had a bomb and he had some people uh, captive. They were hostage. Yeah. Kept them in one place, had them in a room. And in the same building that um, this was taking place, there was a, 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 a sheriff. And he was not in uniform. He was in his own civilian clothes. Well. And when the time was right, he took action, shooting this man who had his bomb and threatened to kill people. Oh, yeah. So what does that have to do with it? Jesus Christ. Yes. Of his royal rule. Yeah. Come on yeah. now. He came with this. Come on, yeah. Lord, mankind. Right. Yeah. And when the time was right, the Bible says that the fullness of time, God sent his son. Yes, he did. And why did he send him? So that you and I could have a right unto the tree of life. Yeah. And that we'll be able just to get a hold of the bloodstained banner, have yeah. it applied into our life. Cleanse and made whole. That's true. And then what are we supposed to do after this? 
the salvation that we receive, we ought to check it into our laws and into our lives. And just spread the good news. Amen. You know that before Jesus came, the law was in place. But Christ came and he fulfilled the law. And then he brought the gospel. And that's why you find that people, they don't want to accept, as was pointed out in Sunday school, New Testament or Old Testament, and they have a choice and they forget in the old and they yeah. in the new. Yeah. Romans 15 and 4 says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime or before our time, it says it was written for our learning. Yeah. 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 If we give up on Old Testament, things that are written before us, what are we going to learn? We've mm -hmm. got to get that base, that foundation through Old Testament scripture yeah. and then to move forward and yeah. to build upon it. Why? Because our hope is that one day Jesus is going to return. When? I don't know, but I'm going to be ready. But when he comes, he'll be able to say to me, well done. Don't go. Verse 30. says, And who is he that will harm you? No. Big question. Oh. If you be followers of that which is good. Oh, My Bible says there's only one that's good. And he's in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, God the Father, the Spirit of our Lord has been given to us. Why? So we could have Holy Spirit power. Yeah. That we could be strong. And that we'll be able to rise up. If you take a look at Peter, flim flam Peter. Wow. How many is this one? Minute is that? Uh -huh. Although he was walking with the Lord, he was packing a sword. Oh, yeah. He's hanging up weapons today. Today, there are a whole lot of folks in the church and they're doing pretty much the same. Mm. Wow. So they said, Oh, I will give you a piece of my mind. Mm. <laughs> Somebody said, What can I do with peace of mind? Make him out now. May as well try to have it, what is little that's left. And just right. concern myself to channel this thing into praising God. Mm. Verse 40. He said, But if you suffer for righteousness' sake, he said, Happy are you. Why are you going to be happy if you're suffering? Because in this world we are going to suffer. Oh, yeah. Christ himself said it. He says, No, no, better roses you want to suffer. Christ came and he said, I am the Son of the living God. I am the Christ. And what he did with him? Nailed him on a cross. He crucified him. Yes. And what do we think we are? When you come and say, I'm a child of the living God, saved by this Jesus, what do you think the world wanted to do? They want to crucify us. They want to lead us in the cross of mine. Holy Roman, call us all this Christ's name. All we do is to stand still and see the glory of God. We don't take no thought about what these people are saying. All we are saying to them is that there is a better way. You and I are preachers. Yes. So we want to be the one who's running the church and in charge of the church, in charge of the ministry, there will only be one. That's right. And when God is ready to bring judgment, he's coming to community revival and oh, yeah. ministry. Yeah. And he's saying, where's Pastor Watkins? That's right. Yes. You know, I may be sitting right here, but he's coming to Pastor Watkins. What are we doing with my name? What are we doing with my Bible, my word? All right. Can you teach it? I don't think there's any doubt in the minds of any one of us that when he comes forward with wholeness, and conviction that he speaks under the anointing of the Spirit. And that's why yokes are being broken. That's why we can hear testimony upon testimony when we open up for testimony. That somebody has been walking right, has been doing right, and God has been blessing them. Amen. Amen. We have a spirit of meekness left to move and to be able to bow before the presence of God. Thank you. He says, no, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Yes. What is he talking about? Yes. Separate him that is in our hearts, in the spirit. Not his pump in the chest, but in our spirit. Yes. That our spirit will be born yes. with the almighty God. Yes. The Son Jesus Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's how we want to sanctify him. We set him apart. And we say to him, Lord, whatever you say to me through your Son, by the power of your Holy Spirit, here am I. I'm willing, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to move. Sanctifying. Yes. You see, and be ready always to give an answer to oh, every man that yes. asks it you a reason oh, of the yes. hope that is yes. in you. And he said, yes. do it with what? With meekness yes. and fear. Yes. Yes. You know, the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, the beginning of wisdom. And it doesn't mean that we are afraid of the Lord, scared still. Just like I with my mom. God rest her soul. I love my mother, but I had a fear of what she will do to me and my behind if I don't do right. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. See, and we ought to have that same type of fear when it relates to God. Yeah. Because God is the one that was pointed out again in Sunday school who will be able to destroy the body and the soul. Yeah. So why are we going to be afraid of what some man is going to do to us? See, if we're so right and living right and we want heaven to be our home, we have the spirit of weakness, we ought to have the spirit of holiness. Just yes. to 
Christ right. fell. And just to say to the evil ones, enough is enough. Yes. People got these things to us on the walk and in the neighborhood and where we are. And as they come to us and they, they say it's foolishness, we're ready to cry and we're ready to break down. Mm -hmm. But there's no need if you're a child of the living God. Yes. Just stand still and say, enough is enough. The devil is alive. Yes. So we want to waste time binding the devil, binding each other. I don't have time to bind no devil. Mm -hmm. I have time for praise of God. Amen. So devil, if you want to praise the Lord with me, come on. The songwriter said, come on and bless the Lord with me. Yes. Not invite him, but he won't come. But he won't, he won't prevent me from praising God anyhow. I want to have a spirit of meekness. A spirit that is not weak. Weakness doesn't help anyone. Spineless cockroaches. People just doing things and they want to run. Run and hide. After they've done what they have got to do, they're ready to run. And the next thing they start asking is, why me, Lord? Yeah. Children of the living God. Why me, Lord? All right. If God is big enough and powerful enough to make a universe, place the stars in place, yes. make man in his own image, yes. what is it that he can say, you and I, go to whatever we are going to? That's right. So yes. we want to be able just to get away from everything. Get away from this. Get away from that. Get away from paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Get away from paying, uh, paying rent. Get away from paying everything else. Mm -hmm. And then we ask the Lord, why me, Lord? Why not you? Why not me? Because I know the God that I serve. I know that he's all powerful. I know what he's capable of doing. So all we ought to be able to stand before the devil and I pass to say, put your hands up and say, come on devil, bring yeah. it on. Yeah. 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 But what we have is people who are weak not prepared just to jump into the arena, well, the arena of prayer, the arena on, of power. Now. And we talk about Holy Spirit power, so that we could bind the forces of hell. That's right. Yes. We spend way too much time discussing things with the devil. The devil will wrap us around our fingers. That's right. Own fingers, and then we look, what happened? We don't understand it. We all wrapped up along our own fingers, can't do anything. But God is saying, I have a job for you to do. And we had a, a, a workshop that was done here not too long ago on a Sunday afternoon and was the ministry of reconciliation. That's right. Yeah. And a man of God is coming and saying that I was married and I divorced my wife. I just couldn't see eye to eye. Mm. And the wife was saying that I will never go to his, um, uh, uh, his uh, the ordination. And she's saying, um, <laughs> But two of us were sitting there, and she said, and that is the bottom line. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so sure about everything else. But when the Lord started dealing with come her, on, yeah. oh, yes. so Amen. Yes. we come can back. change it. Yeah. They could come back, and God is answering prayer, and God is bringing people together, that regardless of what took place and what didn't take place, God has that power so that we could operate into that ministry of yeah, yeah. reconciliation. But we can only do so out of a spirit of meekness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spirit that we are committed unto the word of Almighty God so that we can stand in His presence and serve Him. God has a way of closing doors and nobody can open it. Nor was it upon a boat. And He's there and God puts no and all His animals in there. And all God says, God, shut the door. And all these people who are wrong and laughed at no. They say, no, save my child. No, take me. Oh, I'm this and that. When God closes it, nobody will close it. Amen. Amen. And today, you and I, we have the opportunity in which to stand in the presence of God. Stand to serve it. You know, man feel that, oh, I have it going for me. And the time to say, oh, I'm the man. They built the Titanic. They did. They were right. saying, with some of the best equipment in the world. Mm -hmm. It was going to sink, oh, it's gone, it's going to sink up. Went to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, right. You see, a man never had any Arthur. experience, never had any uh, experience with building ship, perhaps never seen a ship in his life, and on dry ground he's building it. Why? Because God is the builder. God will give you wisdom, yeah. the knowledge to build this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result, you and I are here for yeah. That built for this thing, with all that went to God that ship. Mm -hmm. It was done by the power of God. Well, we have a ship too, and we ought to have it built by God. And what's that ship? Our life. Yes. And we ought to be able in which to stand before God and hear what He's saying. God will never ever save anybody and never give us instruction in how we ought to stay saved, how we ought to walk right, and how we ought to do the thing that He has for us. God will never say to us, well, I save you and I sanctify you and I give you my Holy Spirit, you're on your own. 
God is not that type of God. Yeah. He's not the God that I serve. Come on now. He wants yeah. to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have communication. Yeah. 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 And I can say to God what's on my heart, and God is telling me what's on his. Right. There are some people that God can't correct. Why? Because they know everything. They're always right. <laughs> now there's one thing with this is that when somebody is always right, something's wrong. Amen. So if you have no needs for God, if I'm always right, if I could do it all, if I know it all, I don't have any use for you because I know it all. See, but God with the Bible, it gives you a little part and you a little part yes. and you a little part. Yes. Little part yeah. That part that yes. he gives you, you may be holding on to for this for years. And then all you do is just drop it on the spirit. Mm. Yes, I'm writing a study of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Mm. And I got so much out of it. And then this year, just recently, I started reading the chapter all over. Started seeing some beautiful things, which I never realized wasn't there. And then in Sunday school, Reverend Green is going to come up and he's going to talk about 1st Corinthians. Nothing to do with the last week. But then he said, 1st Corinthians. Mm -hmm. The understanding which people well, have. And all I said to him is that, you and I have got to talk. Yeah. Yeah. One week my wife will talk, and the second week I said, yeah, when are we going to meet? 7 o'clock that evening when we talk. And we met. For three hours, we reasoning yeah, in the scripture. Yeah. One verse, one chapter. Verse by verse. And I just look at him with not amazement because I know God has a calling on his life. And God has placed certain things in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And as much as I've studied before and going over again, never seen it. The man is with a spirit of meekness. This is a young man. By reason of yes, he could be my son. I don't know if he's old as my daughter. But I'm not too proud to humble myself. A spirit of meekness yeah. to hear what he's saying. Why? Yeah. He's a man of God. Yeah. Pastor is saying today, uh, uh, this past week, uh, two weeks ago, I celebrated something like 49 years. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When you're 61, Go say ahead, stay, look real nice. Come on, man. That's right. God has kept me for this 61 long years. Come on, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Sixty yeah. looks so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is happening yeah. is that people to close this year. Yeah. Yeah. We close this year, we're going into next. Yeah. So instead of 61, 62. Yeah. 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 back up. Yeah. Yeah. But God has a way of keeping his feet. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I don't believe you're 62. Yes, he does. Don't believe. You better believe it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God has his hands on people. Yes. He yes. says in Psalm 91, if you read it, if we dwell in the secret place on the north side, that's what he says to the In the end of the psalm, he said, With long life will I satisfy you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, Mother Sam, in her 19, still going strong. Mine, sharp as a tack. Why is this? I reason the strength. Yes. That's what it's all about. Yes. Say, yes. Oh, every time he talks, he talks about Mother Sam. Yes. I love Mother Sam. Can I help you? She has wisdom. No, I don't understand. Yes. Is she somebody who might talk? She would tell me, you're right or you're wrong. Yes. She has the way of just what we need today. She doesn't take a Bible up to talk to me. She has it within her, with the experience. Live her life! Yes. Serving God, so she could minister to us. Today I want to throw out to you, to Madison, get a card and just mail it to her. You don't have the address, bring it and give it to Sister Melbourne. I don't have the address. This is from Mother Simpson. You're coming out to church with Jesus Tarrys next week. Let's some love us. Let's show some love for one for the other. And we can do this thing for Mother Simpson. She has the strength today. She's going to be open soon. Whether it's here or whether it's in the money. We don't know. But Mother Simpson was one. I've known her that on Wednesday, faithfully, she will come in. Walk down those stairs. And the Lord sang to her. Sit at the piano and start banging on your stand. Yeah. All I used to do is to draw strength from this. How did I draw strength? If Mother Sim has a pain and a suffering and she could be here, what about me? So I used to joke with Mother Sims and say, Mother Sims, when you reach my age, I don't know what you're going to do. But she would say, you're just a child. <laughs> so maybe I just wanted her to say that to me. Make me feel good. But the days are running out. Time is running out. There are times that we do change and we don't get our life together. Last month, November, the first Sunday we had communion service. And a whole lot of folks from here never attended. 
Vi ser at der er kommet i sandvok. Det kunne have kommet i den selv. Det er lidt mindre, at vores beskæftning er der. Det er der også uden i november. Vi enjoyer det last i den selv. Vi er trying through. Vi er messed up. Og vi don't have it. So I don't know, next year is coming. So is Jesus. Yeah. Are we ready to meet him? The time is going to come that this service is going to end, the benediction will be given. Close in prayer. And we're going to leave. And as we get out of that door, some people will go to the left, some will go to the right, some will move around, going in our own way. Let me ask a question. What are you going to do if when you leave here and you get out the door, something strange seems to be taking place? And it's the cloud that's yeah. unfolding. Yeah. Yeah. And as we look up, there's the sound of the trumpet. And then there's a shout for the archangel. I don't know what he's going to shout, but he's going to shout. Are you ready to face the master? Are you ready to be caught up from that spirit of meekness? And to stand in the presence very of our Lord, of our Redeemer. Very good. Today is the day that we should be able to say, it's the first day in the rest of my life. Yes. What I'm going to do is that I'm going yes. to commit myself unto the Lord and say to the Lord, Lord, touch me, keep me, save me. Yes. Lord, I want to pray for my pastor. Lord, I want to pray for my mother, yes. my father. Yes. I want to pray for a co-worker, a neighbor, a friend. Right. There's the day that we can do it. Yes. The songwriter say, get right with God. Yes. He said, and do it now. Yes. That's what he's saying. Now we hear a whole lot of songs and people want to get into these songs and well, why? Because of the beat. The one time a sister said to me, do I love to go to New Covenant? She said, why? Well, they that music be jamming. <laughs> you know, what does the word say? Well, I, I don't know the words of the songs, I don't remember the song, but the music was jamming. <laughs> jamming music won't get you into heaven. Now, of course, now I don't like rapping. Rapping, I don't like it. And if you were down with us at Castle East in this past summer, Brother Juno was there. Yeah. And he was doing some rapping. He put together something especially for the people down there right. right. at Castle right. East. Right. It's all about knowing who took it all around. He says there and everything else. He put it together in such a good way. Mm. You know, we are down there and we have a spirit of evening. Brother is bringing one day as well. Brother Juno. And we go there to tell you about the Saturday. And I remember one time that Juma is there and that we have done all that we could do. People gave their lives to the Lord and then Juma said to me, um, could I pray? I said, sure, you want to pray? Pray. And then Brother well, Juma started me getting into some prayer. And he was praying. All right. All right. Yeah. And at times that we go on and we do it to introduce ourselves. Yeah. You know, and I, I always had a kick with Brother Juma. At times he come in and say, well, you know, and he starts out slow. <coughs> yeah, and he starts yes, to right. minister to these people. The one that say, Lord, shut him up. Yeah. <laughs> and he and he's telling them some things that they need to hear. Yeah. And I don't tell him to shut up, because if God placed it on his side, he's right. speak to them. Let him speak. Let him speak. I met one of these young men from that place, and he said to me, I did my father had spoken to me the way you guys spoke to me. I was never ever going to be in that place. So who am I to stop anybody from ministering to somebody? That's very good. Sure. I won't. That'd be out of place. That'd be as they say, egg on my face. <laughs> Lord, I stop him from praying. And Christ is going to say again, I taught my disciples to pray. Yeah. And I told them when they pray to say, Abba Father. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you to say, don't pray? Yeah. Yeah. So I give the example. Why? Hinder people from praying. Yes. Even though somebody isn't saved, I won't tell them to stop praying. Oh. They gotta get a practice so that when they get saved, they know how to pray. Yes. They wanna say some more? Go right ahead and say, don't the same in the same room. <laughs> when the true child of God starts to pray, and we start to go down heaven with prayer, yes. Christ is sitting up and he's taking notice, and he's speaking to the Father and he's saying, yeah, washed in my blood, cleansed and made whole. He said, those two people that here, we don't know if they're touching anything. He says, yes, they do. He says, well, so be it. Yes. And we have people in our lives that we love them. And they're not saved. And we want to minister to them. And we go to them in the spirit of meekness, their family. Yes. Our loved one. They're the first one to give us a hard time. But the only reason that we keep after it is because we know the freedom and the salvation that we have received. And since they are loved ones, we want them to enjoy. 
Now we have right here from Indian Revival Outreach Ministry a whole wealth of issues and people and that we can resort to in time of need. Young ladies, young sisters, you have something to deal with? Put a mother in it. So we have mother in it. Mother in it, children in the church that are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. She must have been doing something right. Go to Mother West. She has somebody in the church. You go to Mother Green. She has a daughter in the church. And not only a daughter, the daughter got a son in the church. She's a minister. She's an evangelist. Why could we go to her? As young sisters, go to her. Talk to her and hear what she's saying. Don't go it alone. You can't go it all alone. For every male that's in the house, we need a woman in our lives. I don't care how young you are, how old you are. So I found that's a young child. Who would be this woman? It could be mama, it could be sister. It could be grandma. There are times that people who grow up and um, like I know past that family down south, and he said this morning that I don't want to go south by Nana no more. She's too strict. <laughs> what you do with in daddy house and get away with it, Nana won't allow it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really want to go. I'm scared about it. But we have it in the house. I think go to this people, speak to them, and hear what they're saying. Yes. They're not only open for, for the sisters, but for the brothers. Yes. You could go and talk to them. Yes. Because they're example in their lives. A mother wife, she has a son, she has a wife. Why is it that they're together? Why is it that they're living a life that God is pleasing? Right. Yes. There's something that she would have done or said in time past that they were able to bring it together. Amen. It wasn't always like that. Yeah. Time God for his mercy. For his grace. Saving grace. Yes. Yes. So when he saves us and he brings us together with that spirit of meekness, I'll be able to stand before his presence. Fall right. before him. And God has a way that he will lift us up in due time. Yes. He, will fire. he will cause us to be uh, filled with his spirit. Yes. He will cause us to be at peace with ourselves, at peace with each other. She we don't want to have the nonsense that's going on. And, oh, no, brother, if I don't have anything to hurt your feelings, I am sorry. I don't walk away. Because if I don't have anything to hurt his feelings, I know it. And I don't have to go with no help. I've got to go there just like David. David went to the Lord and he said, Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Psalm 51. Or he said, Lord, if I don't have anything to, uh, to, uh, to hurt your feelings or that I might displease you with, Nathan the prophet ministered to him. And these are the things that we've got to do. It's a time that we're too proud. We want to do our own thing. You know, true, it will be a shame if Pastor knows that I lie to my brother. So I'm hoping that Pastor doesn't know. It don't make no difference if Pastor knows or not. Oh, man. God knows. Yes. 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 So we have yes. to find our God within this ministry. God will allow us to get out of hand and out of control. God will drop it in the spirit. He'll drop it into somebody's spirit. And we will go to pastor and say, Pastor, you know that brother, that sister. Hey, how do you feel about it? And move things up. You will feel that like you could hide behind the word of God. You can. The word of God will expose us. Yes. Yes. Everything is yes. That's what will happen. So we've got to stand in a ministry where we have meekness yes. or where we have weakness. If there is weakness, we could achieve meekness. We could achieve strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. And if I want to be strong, then I've got to have the Lord smiling and he's joyful. So that when I look at God and he's smiling, and he's in this joyful mood, I know that I'm strong. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is what I have to depend on. I don't want God to put a frown in his face when he looks at me. I don't want Jesus Christ to shake his head and say, depart. I don't want the Holy Spirit to tell Jesus. But you know, I was waiting, I was knocking, but he never opened his heart. Oh, he never. He just wants to be able to open up. Oh. And whatever God has for us, just to receive it. Yeah. See, there was a, a young lady. And she went messing with this young man. And the young man said, well, I'm going to spread some bad rumors about you, and what I did and what I didn't do with you. She went home and don't know what to do. And after she examined the situation, she went to her mama and told her mama what this man is saying. And when the, the young man came to her house to tell his mother to spark her eye, the mother said, come on in. <laughs> like, oh, so you are going to spread some lies about my child. And you are going to say some things. 
But a tough one for you. She already spoken to me. She knew exactly what a child was saying. She was able just to say to this child, I thank God for you and to receive instruction. But regardless of what it is, come and talk to me about it. For those of you who are unaware of the fact, Mr. Saddam Hussein has been captured. Amen. He was held and he's alive. Not a shot was fired. He had two sons and they're dead. And what a way to learn a lesson from the Bible. That God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Saddam Hussein didn't love the world he gave to his son and he's still in hot water today. He's going to be tried. Everyone knows what he will do. I didn't know. Coming about sporting a bear and everything else. They shave him, examine him for lice and, and for everything else. And they say, well, he seemed to be in good health. He's probably being held in the airport. One of the most secure police in Iraq today. And he said, well, when we talk about Iraq and his high Iraq and, and all this type of thing, the people in Iraq call the place Iraq. There's a singer from South Africa, Marion Makiba. Yeah. She's from old. She has a song that she used to sing, and she said, this song is known as the click song by the British. She said, why? Because they cannot say, what? What is it? No words. What? The British call it the click song. Don't make no difference how we call Iraq. That dictator is under arrest. He's going to be tried. Jesus was tried. Yes. Found guilty for sin that he never committed. And for my sin. Nailed to a cross. Yeah. Some writer said, he was nailed to the cross for me. And talk about a spirit of meekness, never said a word. Not a mumbling word, the song writer said. And I asked him, Jesus, how much would you love him? Righteousness. Yes. Gave up the Why? So that three days and three nights after, when hell was celebrating, because they tried to kill him, the devil had people running around. King having people running after children, killing them. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary. She was take this child in Egypt because yes. they were seeking to kill him. Yes. This child was going to be a celebration of this time of year. She said a time of, of joy on earth, peace on earth, to yes. men of good will. Yes. What are you and I doing to promote good will? Are we keeping away from each other or are we being drawn together? We've got to be able to be drawn together by the power of God through the shed blood of Jesus in a spirit of meekness. See, the world sees us with this spirit of meekness, and they say, oh, we, we, we. But when we start seeing the results, the light shining in our light, it's a different story. You see, God said to us, let your light so shine. But some of us, we are going and what we want to do is to go there and shine our light. Yes. God never tells us to go shine light. No praise. No. For me to shine my light, I'll step over everybody in this way. But I want my light to be seen. I want to be way up. This is my light. All right. But if I live right, my light is going to shine. Then and only then, but people will be able to look and say, spirit of meekness. Yes. Not weakness. Yeah. Meekness won't get us anywhere. Business is fatal, diluted. Spineless cockroach. <laughs> but the spirit of being meek is a, a spirit with patience and all that. Yes, and we are steadfast and we're not having any resentment. Yes. There's nothing that you could do to prevent me from loving you. You could hate me. You could denounce me. You could do what you want to do about me. Say what you want to say about me. But you can't stop me from loving you. Yes. 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 God one day. One day. We don't want Jesus Christ to get up with all the person and say, ha, I never knew you. What we want Jesus to say to us is, well done, yeah. your good way to wait for the servant. Now people want to be a deacon because perhaps the title seems so good. To me, deacon is silver. That's what it is. Try to call upon me to move a chair. I'm ready to move the chair. There's not everything he's going to call upon me to do that I'm going to agree with it. But I'll never challenge him in the open service in the congregation. I will call him up after service. Pastor, you know in that service today you have me move a chair? I'll go after the chair and move a chair. That's what it's all about. And he will tell you, set me right. You are servant in the church. That's why you are dead deacon. So if I want something and the service is going to run right, I could call upon you. I will call upon me for my call upon minister, evangelist, and it will be done. Yes. You know, he never will get any fight with me, regardless of what he wants to say. In the service, he's going to do it. 
Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I'm going to him. Because I know that if I do things that is not pleased with him, I'm going to hear from him. Yeah. Uh, one time in a service, the youth service, second Sunday of the month, a woman came and pointed a finger in my face. She said, when you're going to anoint, you better come and anoint me. Her husband was there anointing. The other people anointed. Why me? And I said to her, I said, you know what a busy body? <laughs> she said in the church, she said, you hear what he called me a busy body? <laughs> she shouldn't have said that. Because I raised my voice a little higher. I said, yes, you are a busy body. And then she come again. I went up again. Yes, you are a busy body. <laughs> Next Sunday, I had to apologize. The pastor was there, his associate pastor. He said, you're in the office now. I'm with a red carpet. Uh, what is this and what is that? And I tell him where I was coming from. You know, and I apologize to him. Because he never taught me in any way to shout at anybody. The next Sunday I'm in church and I stood before the church. And I said, I want to apologize to the sister for yelling at her. I said, but beyond no delusion, my message remained the same. <laughs> and I'm going to have my opinion. And you want to have your I, I don't form an opinion based upon what people are saying. I form an opinion based upon my maturity. And all it is is just an opinion. And that opinion is either right or it's wrong. If it's wrong and you come and you show me what's wrong, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not too big to say that I'm sorry. Forgive me. But I was proven wrong and disappointed. You see, God has a way that he wants to deal with us through other people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will come and just to blow up just like I did that morning. And it's not good for anybody blowing up with anybody after a service. Yes. It's not good. It's not right. No. So my pastor, he was an associate pastor, had to deal with that. Right. He dealt with me. He didn't cut no corners. He let me know where he was coming from. Yeah. I don't hate him. I love him. You know why I love him so much? He didn't deal with me in the open. He took me to the office. Yeah. That's where he dealt with me. He had a little respect. God and I had for that sister. God had no choice. Yeah. God is calling you and I. He's calling us today. Yeah. What is He calling us to do? To the ministry of reconciliation. That's right, brother. This service is about to end. Yeah. The question is, where are you going to spend eternity? That's right. Where are you going to spend eternity? Yes. Where am I going to spend my eternity? Yes. Yes. Are we willing today to stand before God and say, Lord, touch me, give me strength? Give me a determination, give me the courage. Thank you, Lord. Somebody may not be saved. Mm -hmm. And you can give your life to the Lord today before we leave. Yes. What does it mean giving your life to the Lord? It's just believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth. The book of Romans 10, 9 and 10 say that if we believe in our hearts on the Lord Jesus, yes. and we confess with our mouth, yes. that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Yes. Yes. All right. The Bible says all have sinned come short of the glory. So you never give your life to the Lord. You're in this church today and it's a time that you could do it. You could walk right out and face Christmas as a new preacher in Christ Jesus. Say that, Lord, I need you. I've been doing it my way for such a long time. Mr. Sinatra is the only man to sing about it. He's done it my way. You know what another minister said? That God is not Burger King and you can't have it your way. We've got to be able to praise God. That's right. The man that wants to give our lives to the Lord. And here this other preacher is saying, and Lord, I just want to worship you. Lord, I just want to praise you. He said, this is the time that a woman can tear up their makeup and cry. Yeah. Why? Because I'm pouring my heart out. Yeah. Lord, have mercy upon you. How many of us want to pray for our husband, or for our wife, or for our child, or for our friend? We want to have the opportunity. God says, I'm going to come and sum things up. All I want to leave with the church today is that we have got to have the spirit of meekness. Yes. Yes. Walk and fear in the admonition of the Lord. Yes. Not fear shaking in our boots for God, but fear in the things that God knows, yes. which is true. Yes. When He speaks it, it will come to pass. Yes. And if you don't do it, yes. it will happen as God said it. Yes. That is what we have to do in our lives. I've got to live right. Yes. Pastor, I said it's not time and time again. 
The only way that you could get even with anybody is to live right. Yes. Yes. We have a chance yes. to say, Lord, I'm going to live right. Lord, I'm going to stand in your presence. Yes. Lord, I'm going to serve you. Yes. Lord, I want you to have that spirit of meekness, not yes. a spirit of weakness. For God hasn't created us out of a spirit of meek, a weakness, but one of meekness. Full of yes. God, through his Holy Spirit. Yes. God has his business set up, his organization is set up in such a way that the first thing you've got to do is to get right with God. Yes. You get saved. Yes. That's it. And then once we get saved, he says he will sanctify us holy. And then his son Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Yes, he will. You can't leave Jesus out of it. John the Baptist said, there come one after me. He says, I'm not the one. He said, well, when he comes, he says, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and not the fire. So we can't leave Jesus out of it. It's his sacrifice on the cross which will set us free. It's his sacrifice which will allow the Spirit to come into our life so that we can say, great I see that is in me. And he is that blind devil that's out into the world. And Lord, I want to save you. Lord, I want to praise you. That's it. Lord, I want to give you more and give you glory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the time of the year. We are celebrating the birth of the Savior. Amen. Let us just keep in mind and keep in focus, not the way the world is pointing us with the Christmas season, but through the word of God. And you see it. The word Amen. says, three wise men came. The Bible said, wise men came. Amen. We are bringing gold, frankincense, and all. That's God, that's where they get the tree from. I don't know. We have got to be able to be in line with the word of God. We have got to be able to live this time to cause man alone. You know, perhaps one of the things that children have a hard time dealing with parents about, you say, well, you know, mom, you know, dad, you come to me and you lie about the tooth fail. You come and then you lie about the Easter bunny. And you get a final thought that you're lying to me about Santa Claus. Why should I believe you when you talk about him? Jesus? Amen. Say the truth, brother. What is the answer? You've got to be able to speak the truth. That's the instant it. Right. Season, all the season. That's okay. People may say, well, you know, it's the case and it's the time of no. year. The time we're dealing with is the time of the word of God. But you come alive. You come alive. The Bible commands us in Proverbs 22 and 6 to train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. Not into his time, not his time, and all these type of things, but into the word of God. And when he becomes old, then he won't depart from it. Those are Proverbs. We have got to be able to stand tall, stand firm. And just be both in a spirit of meekness, not weakness. Yes. And we'll see glory of God in our lives. God bless you. Yes. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.